Hello, sunshines. Thank you for coming back to see me. Hope you're feeling good. Hope you're excited. Are you excited? Just because? Good, because I am too. Hi, this is Nia. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe for me, please. Hit the little button down there. It takes two seconds of your time. I promise it'll be worth it. And if you're a YouTuber, I will follow you right back. All right? Pinky promise. So listen, guys, this is what I'm thinking about. So we know uh, that the world conditions are crazy. Things are getting worse and worse and worse by the day. Every time you turn the news on or open a newspaper or whatever, there's nothing good. There's very little good news. Even reality shows, pettiness is just on the rise. It's just unhealthy, unhealthy just bad time in history. It's horrible and it's, it's pretty sad, but you know, I just want to give you guys just this little analogy. So say you're a parent. I won't say a mother or dad because both can do this and you take your kid to the beach, right? And your kid's got all his little, little Johnny, we'll call him little Johnny. He's got all of his little tools, his bucket, his shovel, his little hat. So he gets to building and building his little castle, you know. So you come over because you got castle skills. And you assist little Johnny. And you start putting little things in place. You got the little window, got the little parking spot thing. This castle is decked, okay? Johnny like, whoop on board okay so anyway you got johnny all g'd up his little castle is just beautiful you taking pictures johnny's taking selfies so then there is ralphie now ralphie is a couple you know a couple feet over or 100 feet over and he's looking this whole time he's building a little castle too and he's looking and he's building and he's looking and he's building but Ralphie is developing something within himself called envy. And he wants what, what little Johnny has, you know. Johnny's got a cool shovel. Johnny's got windows. I don't. Things like that. So Ralph comes on over. He's walking over. La da 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 Completely kicks Johnny's castle all over. Stumps all on it. Just smashes it to smithereens. Now Johnny's pout or he's crying and little Ralphie is gone back to wherever he came from. And so the parent is trying to console little Johnny and console little Johnny about his castle. So let me ask you, if you are that parent, what would your immediate response be? What would you consider doing? I'll let you think about that. What would you do? I'll tell you what I would do as a parent. I would build little Johnny a bigger, better castle. And I would add some other stuff in there, sandstone or whatever, sandstone or whatever I needed to add to make it more durable so that not even a hurricane could knock that bad boy down. Not even Ralphie or anybody else could destroy that little house again, ever. Because just consoling little Johnny, that's fine. But he really wants his, his little castle. He was happy with that. So that's what I would do as a parent. So having said that, it just makes me think of God and how he feels toward us. You know, he gave us this beautiful earth as a home. This is where we in were intended, intended, excuse me, to live, to reside to thrive, to populate, to just flourish. This is the original plan. And as we know, Adam and Eve, well, you know the rest of the story. So just like that sandcastle, Johnny and Jealous Ralphie there, just because the sandcastle was messed up doesn't mean that God is going to throw out his whole plan for us. Just because his plan was thwarted, kind of got sidetracked or whatever, disobedience, rebellion, you name it, does not mean that he is not going to go forth 
with his will for those who love him and for those who are obedient in following his son, Jesus Christ. That's just a fact. And I want to show you in the scripture. Now, many people think the book of Revelation is, oh, the book of Revelation. I don't want to talk. But actually, if you're a Bible, I just, I studied the Bible. So when you, you come to learn that it's more a book of hope, great hope, great hope, great salvation, promises, it's not just a book of doom and gloom, okay? So let me put my little readers on. And if you can turn with me, or if not, you can go ahead and just listen. Whatever Bible you you have, it doesn't matter. They all essentially say the same thing. So the book of Revelation. My mouth is so dry for some reason. I just ate some mangoes. I don't get that. Hmm. So the book of Revelation. Um chapter 21 now the backdrop for this the apostle paul was sentenced to this island called patmos p-a-t-m-o-s because he continued to preach about jesus and about the kingdom of god after jesus was crucified so that's how they did it back then he was sentenced to this island and so while he was on this island god gave him visions and visions which is why he wrote the book of revelation he was inspired they weren't his thoughts God gave him these thoughts to write. So anyway, so this is Paul, chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea is no more. I also saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God and prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. With that, I heard a loud voice from the throne say, look, the tent of God is with mankind and he will reside with them and they will be his people and, ver and God himself will be with them. Excuse me. And verse four says, he will wipe out every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, look. I am making all things new. He also says, write, for these things are faithful and true. And you can read that for yourselves. Again, the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I just read to you verses 1 through 5. So basically, you know, here in verse uh, 4, I appreciate this so much because it talks about every tear being wiped away. Every bad memory, every bad experience, every heartache, every lost loved one, whatever causes or had caused us pain before in this time is going to be taken away. We won't remember things that were painful. We won't. It will be eternal bliss for us. And I like the fact that um, he says death will be no more. And in verse three, he says, the former things have passed away. Now, let me ask you this again. Rhetorical. Were these things ever in heaven? Pain, mourning, outcry, death. They were never in heaven. So it's logical to conclude that there will be this beautiful blissness, if you will, paradise conditions on earth because these conditions exist here which is why John saw the new the vision he saw with the city coming down from heaven what's under heaven earth right so sometimes I, I really think it's just you know people um it's just a lack of reasoning and God it's not about oh you have to have faith you do have to have faith but it's okay to think as well. It's okay to use your mind. God gave us thinking ability. Paul even said somewhere in scripture that we should reason, use our reasoning ability, reason on these, on these things. So that's my tidbit. I hope that helps some of you. Please know that everything going on in this world today is not, this isn't the end. It's just making way for something so much better, so much better. I want death to be gone. I, you know, I don't want to hear people about people being sick. 
I don't want anything to cause us pain. I want a beautiful life, a beautiful existence. And hopefully you do too. Thank you for hanging out with me again. This is Mia. Go ahead and subscribe because you are in the know and I appreciate you. God bless. See you next time.